Hey everyone, this is Martin. We're back, I think now for part four, for the update of Super Bug Killer, uh, introducing some extra in-app purchases, uh, plus the Star Trail effect that, uh, that we've been talking about in the last video. Uh, so the next thing that we want to do here is, inside of this Shop Buy screen, is we want a button down here, uh, which says, uh, unlock the, uh, the, the, the Firework Star Sword, something like that. So, first thing, since we've got a bunch of buttons here, I can just copy one of these pretty easily since I'm going to use the same text uh, and the same backboard as well. So, I'm just going to select one of them and click Control C and Control V to paste it. And I'm going to say, let's call this unlock uh, the da -da 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 -da, fireworks star sword. Okay. And I'm just going to move this down a touch and just over to the left so it's a little bit different. And let me, okay, so I need to adjust the text as well here, don't I? So unlock. Okay, unlock the, uh, actually, I don't know if I should have some text in there. Um, Actually, no, no. Let's just call this. Uh, let's just call this uh, Star Sword, because I don't really want. There's already quite a lot of text on this screen. I don't want to add much more, uh, to be honest. So I think uh, I think that's pretty cool. What I want to do as well is I want to have the uh, the little star particle effects here next to this. Uh, and it's this star sword button and also uh, a little bit of a, uh, a small image as well which I've set up here. Uh, I just did this image quickly before in Photoshop. Uh, I didn't go through this in the video just because it's it was it's a kind of separate thing and I didn't, wasn't sure how to get it done. So I didn't sort of want to use time on the video uh, to do that. But I'm just going to set some properties here so it's it's more optimized. It's a little bit smaller. It's a very, it's going to be a very small um, uh, image on the screen so it really doesn't need to be a large at all, it doesn't have to take up a lot of uh, space on the person's device. So let's just make the material for this, call the same name. Uh, this workflow that you're seeing right now, it's it's kind of, if, you, if you're used to Unity, this is generally how it works and uh, you know, sort of connecting uh, uh, materials to textures. Uh, those of you who are pretty new to Unity, it's going to look a little bit complicated but I think uh, if, you, if you've not checked it out, check out our tutorial videos on uh, making a, a Pong style game. Uh, it goes from basically scratch, you know, all the way up to, to getting the game running and actually deployed into a web browser as well. Uh, hopefully you guys would find that useful, especially the people who are new to uh, Unity development. Definitely check it out. So I'm just going to move this around and I'm going to, uh, what did we call this? I'm forgetting the name of the, uh, the texture here. The material. Okay, so that's fine. Uh, I'm just going to call this uh, image. <coughs> Make it a child. I'm just going to center this. And da, da, da. I want to get this a little bit in front. Uh, shift it around a touch like this. Move the camera so I can adjust things a little bit easier. And I'm going to make this a little bit bigger as well and just try to rotate this around. And I also want to add those sparkles on the end, you see, um, that we had in the main game scene. So I'm just going to save this scene. I'm going to go to the game scene that we were in before and I'm going to grab this. Da, 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 wherever it is, firework. This one here, yeah, this, the particles. Um, I'm just going to change the name of these here. So I'm just going to call these particles, star sword, just so it's clear uh, what we're actually working with. So I'm just going to copy the name and I'm going to make this a prefab object. And a prefab object allows you to to take something from one scene and put it into another scene, which is very, very, very useful. So I'm just going to find my fly slice folder, create a prefab, use the same name, and to apply the prefab, this is a blank one right now, I'm just going to drag this up here, and there we go, the prefab's ready. Um, clicking Command and S just to do a quick save, 
I'll find the shop scene. Double tap that, there we go. And if I find, if I click on uh, rainbow, I see there's the problem again. I've forgotten the name of the uh, <laughs> name of the object. That's not too good. Oh my god. The name of the prefab that we just built. Oh, okay. Anyway, it's a good job these games are not too large, or else I would really be lost uh, trying to find things. But that's okay, since we've got folders set up here, we know where it is. So particles, uh, star sword, rainbow star sword. Anyway, we'll we'll call it star sword. That's that's pretty easy to remember, I guess. Uh, all right. So what I'm going to do is just drag these particles down into the uh, as a child of the unlock button, and I'm going to drag this over here, and I'm going to bring it forward slightly uh, so that it's in front of stuff and I think what we want to do is just sort of move this perhaps maybe that way a little bit and the image I'll just rename this to call the slice image just so we know it's the what we're exactly we're working with uh -huh. Uh, I'm just trying to organize this in a, in a in a good position right now. So okay, I'm gonna just shift that over a little bit there. Uh, you don't have to click play to actually see the particles play. You can just hold, uh, just highlight the uh, the objects in there uh, in the hierarchy so that it it, it starts to play. Another glass of tea to keep me going. All right, so um, I think that's okay. Uh, like I say, obviously with these things, guys, if 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 you are um, uh, if if you are uh, from say um, a, a team of, of guys that have some a lot of time to develop something, um, you know, if, if you say from a larger a larger development studio, uh, obviously these things would be taking more time. There'll be a lot more time in terms of polishing art design if you have art directors or artists. They'll be able to do this a lot better than I can, and if, especially if you guys are artists, you'll be able to do it a lot faster and, and a lot prettier than I'm doing it here. Uh, but since we the, you know, time is really a factor in, in a independent development, in, independent uh, studios, uh, a business model is to get games out there faster. So that's why we're kind of working on this fast, uh, plus to demonstrate it to you guys, of course. All right, so um, so we'll unlock fire with Star Sword. So I'm just going to put the, I'm just going to call this Star Sword 3D text. Keep this simple. All right, so there we go. So what happens now is if the player taps on this, what we want to show is a pop-up which says, enter a code to um, uh, to unlock the Star Sword. Uh, and that code is going to be like an affiliate sales call, uh, code. So as I explained before, the, the one of the plans that we have is obviously we, we want players to try and pass, pass the, um, uh, the game around and, and make the game more viral, of course. Uh, all of our games. So one of the plans is that we want to, to, to sort of test out initially is this affiliate sales. So players or, or anybody, it doesn't have to be a player, um, if they recommend the game, if somebody downloads the game, they recommend it to somebody, they download the game and then if they enter the code that was given to them to unlock the Star Sword, if they later make a purchase, either one of, some, one of these B packs here, the person that originally recommended and gave the code gets 50%. So uh, we'll see how that goes. It's still early stages, and we might um, we're just going to be testing with uh, a couple of close friends and associates to try this out. But if anybody is interested out there who's watching this video, please let we know. We might we might be able to uh, uh, to work with you on that as well. Uh, like I say, it's very early stage, and it, it, we're just sort of testing this at the moment. So um, if things change, then then please uh, please bear that in mind. So I think the way to do this is. I'm trying to think the best way to actually uh, get this to, to capture. So I think this is probably the best way to do it is in here. This is the main game script for the scene. Um, okay, so else if... <coughs> excuse me, so if we're tapping on the Star Sword 3D text... Okay, then we want to... We wanna basically start the ability to capture the code that the player is typing in. So I actually have an original, uh, another game scene here which we can use, uh, which was from another game. 
Uh, and that was actually the uh, the score multiplier scene from AMX. And I just need to check. Da -da -da. I'm going to save. I'm going to open this scene here. This is from a different game, and it's in the same project, um, which is useful because then we can just go back and forth. Uh, we always we always have all all of the files are still inside of the the project, so it's useful. Um, ba -ba -ba. Multiplier code. I believe this is the one. That's now open. Yeah, that's the one. I quickly checked that before. Fly slice game. Okay. Uh, da -da -da. Go back to the shop scene. There we go. Okay, so we've got this script open now. Um, using the 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 keyboard here, the uh, uh, the keyboard input is basically the the native pop up that you see. You say when you enter in a, a uh, an email address or, or anything in a website using uh, an iPhone or an iPad, you get the keyboard that pops up. This is uh, this is what we're going to call here, and it's very very useful for capturing uh, players like text what they're entering into the uh, into the game. If you need to get some kind of code or password or, or email or something like that, so I think the first thing is we need uh, these ones up here. So keyboard, the text we want to capture the text, and user started entering the code. That's right. So again sort of illustrating the fact that code reuse is extremely useful and saves a lot of time because I would have to investigate how to do this but since I know I've already done it in a previous game I can just copy over and, and use it again so keyboard keyboard input text user starts entering code text that's all good and I believe the way that we did it last time is inside of the arrays um, let me just move this down a second I'll get rid of that for a moment. And da da da. Uh, okay. Enter new code, 3D text. And I'm just checking where I'm supposed to do this. Hey guys, please bear with me for a moment. Enter new code, 3D text. Keyboard open. Okay, user started entering code equals 3D. Yeah, that's the one we want to copy. And that's the one we want to put down here at the bottom. All right. Uh, and yeah, if one open the user starts to turn. Okay. If they do start to open the the three D text. Okay, I believe that is in the update loop. Sorry, I'm just sort of chatting to myself here too. You guys probably aren't understanding this so much, but I'll, I'll explain it a little bit more. Um, okay, so get the input text from the keyboard. That is correct. And I'm just going to put this down here. Okay, so get the input text from the keyboard. Um, so if the user started to use the text to go true, keyboard text, keyboard input text equals keyboard dot text. If keyboard done, user text equals blah blah blah. User started in text. Okay, check if code invented is valid. Yeah, so we want to check this one in a moment actually. Okay. Alright, so I think I think this should be fine. And uh, we want to check the codes as well. Uh, we're gonna have a preset list of codes that the uh, player can use and I might have to just pause the video for a moment and set up these codes basically because these codes are going to be affiliate sales codes uh, that are associated with with like say link share so I uh, in a link share style so I can't really share these with you guys at the moment so I'm just going to pause the video there for a moment whilst I get this set up and then I'll explain a little bit through the the, uh, the codes so I'll be back in just a moment if we can find out how to uh, to pause this, there we go. Hey again, everyone. I'm back. I just want to check that I'm actually recording uh, as we're speaking. Yeah, we've got that up there, just so that uh, I'm not just talking to myself as I'm making a video. So uh, I just did a little bit of coding whilst whilst I was away there. So because uh, I wanted to check a couple of things, I'm not just sort of hum and ha and sit there like scratching my head uh, how how to do things so that we actually move along in the video. So just to explain a little bit, uh, so what we're doing here is if the if the player taps on the uh, the Star Sword 3D text, which is uh, this one down here, 
Uh, what happens is the iPhone keyboard will pop up and it will it will ask you to enter some uh, it will it will say enter some code. Uh, we might have to do a little bit more here, and I'll, I'll try to do that in a moment. So uh, iPhone it opens the keyboard. Uh, we don't want it to be a number pad. We actually want it to be a um, da -da -da. I can't remember which one it is. Number pad. Uh, the number pad just shows the numbers. We actually want it to be a a phone pad, like a keyboard. That's capable. I think default is probably the best one. Uh, the iPhone keyboard type default allows uh, pops up with like the the QWERTY keyboard and then the uh, the numbers across the top. So that's because we want players to be able to input uh, uh, you know A B C and uh, and also numbers as well. 